GLC brings a bit of Mercedes polish to the premium part of the mid-sized SUV segment, and this improved version of the first generation model is a significant step forward from the original. The whole of the mainstream engine range has been refettled, and infotainment media connectivity has taken an equally large step forward. Plus, efficiency, refinement and build quality represent other strong points. It's a very complete package. The GLC has been rejuvenated beneath the bonnet, the key update being the introduction of the 2.0-litre OM654 series diesel unit that we're trying here in the GLC 220D variant that most buyers of this car in our market will choose. This engine is far more refined than the rumbly 2.1-litre unit it replaces, and it's quite a bit more frugal too. In this 194 HP derivative, it's capable of up to 47.9 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle, and 137 grams per kilometre of any DC rated CO2. The same power plant also features in the alternative 300D model in an uprated uh, 245 HP state of tune. Both engines are mated to a package that, as in all GLCs, includes 4MATIC on-demand four-wheel drive and a 9G Tronic plus 9-speed auto gearbox, uh, which works with the usual dynamic select driving modes, uh, which alter drive response, steering feel and ESP settings. Mercedes also now offers GLC buyers a slice of electrified technology. Uh, the brand's 48 volt EQ Boost mild hybrid tech features in the 258 HP mainstream 2 litre petrol unit that you'll find in the GLC 300. Or you can opt for a plug in variant, the GLC 300E, which makes a 2 litre petrol unit with a 90 kilowatt electric motor to create a 320 horsepower total output from a powertrain that, when it's fully charged, is able to achieve up to 27 miles of WLTP all-electric driving. If, on the other hand, speed is everything from your petrol-powered GLC, then you'll want the barnstorming V6 and V8 Mercedes-AMG petrol performance models that sit at the top of the range. Uh, the GLC 43 uses a 390 HP 3-litre V6, while the top GLC 63 features a charismatic 4-litre V8 offered in either 476 or 510 HP states of tune. Off-roading won't be on the agenda for these variants or indeed for any GLC model in normal use, but should it ever be uh, absolutely necessary, light tracks are well within this car's remit, uh, or you will be able to attempt more than that should you opt for the priciest AMG line ultimate trim level, which gives you the brand's variable height air body control air suspension system. Subtle changes mark the revised version of this first-generation GLC apart from the original. Uh, the fact that it's also available in a separate coupe body style relieves this standard SUV variant of the need to look too self-consciously sporty, but there is still just enough visual dynamism here to interest someone who might also be considering, say, an Evoque, an F-Pace, or an Alfa Stelvio in this segment. Or at least there is if you trade up beyond this entry-level sports spec variant anyway. Time to take a seat up front. The GLC's cabin was always a showroom selling point and with this revised model thoughtful changes have further enhanced it. A smarter three-spoke steering wheel incorporates little touch pads, uh, the left hand one of which can operate the now much larger 10.25 inch touch screen which is positioned on top of the dash. This much more sophisticated media setup incorporates the Stuttgart brand's new generation MBUX, that's the Mercedes-Benz user experience multimedia media platform with its clever Hey Mercedes voice activated functionality. Uh, now it offers navigation, radio, media, phone, uh, info, apps and store settings that you can flick between using this intuitive touchpad between the seats here. Similar options are also found in the instrument cluster. Now a base model like this one stays with old tech analog dials surrounding a central 5.5 inch display, but the upper spec GLC models now feature configurable virtual gauges on a 12.3 inch TFT screen. Time to take a seat in the back. Overall, we think that a couple of adults should be very comfortable back here, even if they're six-footers. Uh, try and fit three folk in here, though, and things are far less pleasant, with issues likely to be created by this rather high central transmission tunnel and by the fact that the middle seat has a rather firm backrest. 
Let's finish by taking a look at luggage space and that's accessed via the standard electrically operated easy pack tailgate. Uh, now Mercedes obviously benchmarked this car's arch rivals BMW Z3 and Audi's Q5 here because the load capacity on offer, uh, 550 litres, matches that that you get in those two cars exactly. Image is everything when it comes to premium mid-sized SUVs and on that basis this improved GLC is a very desirable package. In terms of styling, technology and efficiency it borrows hugely from other Mercedes models to very good effect. Of course this car's two closest arch rivals the BMW X3 and the Audi Q5 have strong followings and beyond those cars there are trendier looking options a Range Rover Evoque or an Alfa Romeo Stelvio for example. Uh, others may want the seven seat capacity of a comparable Land Rover Discovery Sport. As an all rounder though, combining many of the qualities that you'll find in all those cars, the GLC remains a tempting package. A segment benchmark, you'd have to say so.